this is video 2 of Data Engineerism Camp Week 5 and in this video we will talk about Apache Spark. Previously we talked about um, batch processing and we talked about different type of technologies we can use for executing batch jobs. We talked about Python scripts, we talked about SQL and we talked about Spark. So in this video we will spend more time talking about Spark, what Spark is and why do we need it. If I go to Google and type in Apache Spark, what we will see in the results is that uh, this kind of overloaded sentence it's a multi-language engine for executing data engineering, data science and machine learning on single node machines or clusters. Probably this one is better. So the part about large scale data processing. So this is exactly what Spark is doing. So this is an um, engine, something that executes. Maybe, maybe let me take a note engine here is an important word because spark let's say we have some data in our database or the data lake spark pulls this data to its machines to its executors then it does something with this data and then it outputs it to again data lake or data warehouse so the processing happens in spark that's why it's an engine and it is distributed so we can have a cluster and in this cluster we can have tens or thousands of machines and all of them pull this data, do something with this data and then save it somewhere. And then the other word we saw that this is a multi-language engine. So this is actually the case because we can use Java and Scala. Spark is actually written in Scala. So Scala is the sort of native way of communicating with Spark. But then there are wrappers around Spark for Python. Uh, I think there is a wrapper for R. I don't know if it's popular, if people use it, but I know it exists. Probably there are also wrappers for other environments, but uh, the one for Python is pretty popular. So it's called uh, PySpark. And as I know, in many companies, this is usually the preferred way of writing Spark jobs. Data engineers write Python code and uh, sometimes when you need to be a little bit more flexible then they rewrite parts of the code in Scala. Well in some companies they use only Scala, in some companies data engineers use only Java, but PySpark is quite popular. Spark is used for executing batch jobs but it can also be used for streaming. So we will not cover streaming here, we will only talk about batch jobs. But the idea here with streaming is um, you can see a stream of data as a sequence of small batches and then you apply similar techniques for processing this stream as you would do with batches. But we will not cover it here, we will focus on batch jobs. Maybe now you have a rough idea what Spark is. Now let's talk about when we can use it. So typically Spark is used when your data is in a data lake. I'll use a blue one for a lake because water is blue, right? So we have data lake and usually this is just some location in S3 or Google Cloud Storage. And then we have a bunch of parquet files there. Spark would pull this data from a data lake, do some processing and then put this data back to a data lake. And you would typically use for the same things where you would use SQL because we have a data lake here. So it's not a data warehouse. In a data warehouse, we would just go with BigQuery and use SQL. But when you just have a bunch of files lying in your S3 or Google Cloud Storage, then using SQL is not always easy. Then you would go with Spark. Although these days um, you can actually run SQL on your data lake using things like Hive or Presto, well, Spark as well, or in AWS, uh, there is a managed version of Presto called Athena. Then you can actually also use these things to execute SQL on your data in a data lake and then write them back to a data lake as well. And I would say if you can express your job as a SQL query, then you should go with Presto or Athena or think in a BigQuery, you can also do this with external tables, right? But sometimes you cannot express your jobs with SQL. Sometimes you need more flexibility. Sometimes maybe your code becomes too difficult to manage and then yeah, you want to put them in different modules. You want to have a lot of unit tests. Maybe you have some functionality that is just not possible to put inside SQL. And then this is exactly when you want to use Spark. 
and from my personal experience so i work as a data scientist usually things i cannot express with sql are things that are related to machine learning which is both training the machine learning model and then using this machine learning model i often use spark for some of these things and a typical workflow i would have at work is we have some raw data and then this raw data gets on a data lake and then we would execute a bunch of transformations we would transform this data already sitting in a lake we will maybe do some aggregations and things like this maybe joins and then we will use sql for that so like athena for example or presto then the data is prepared we did some transformation but we need something more complex something that we cannot express with sql and then we have another step where we use spark and then we can have a python job for training a machine learning model. That's one flow. And then there could be another flow for actually using a machine learning model. For example, here from this, we can have another Spark job for taking a model that we trained here. So this thing outputs a model. We can take this model that uh, our Python script created and then use Spark to actually apply the model. And then the result would go, for example, to our data lake and then from this lake it can go to a data warehouse or somewhere. This is a pretty typical situation where we would have a lot of different components and most of the pre-processing is happening here in this case. So that's why my recommendation would be if you can express something with SQL, you should go with SQL. But for cases when you cannot, you should go with Spark. And I think this is enough talking. So in the next video, we will use Spark locally. And I want to show you how to install Spark on your local computer. And then we will use it for doing some experiments before we write a Spark job and deploy it to a Spark cluster. So see you soon.